Welcome to Wonderland Weekly, hosted by Toronto Tai. Now sit back and have a wonderful week. Hey everyone, Toronto Tai back here at Canada's Wonderland once again for another wonderful week. And it is, uh, you know, last week was the opening of Splashworks. Next week is the start of the brand new Food and Wine Festival. But this week is just kind of casual. You know, the, the, I'm sure there will be updates, but nothing major to report on. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely going to be exploring the park and uh, seeing anything that is new or different here at the very start of June. Just taking a quick look around inside the Griffin's Crown VIP Lounge. Uh, so yeah, you do have snacks and uh, alcoholic beverages there. Uh, you've got some TV screens up here. Uh, it is very nicely air conditioned in here, so that is wonderful. Uh, and uh, yeah, some little games. Uh, very comfy looking, looking chairs in here. That is uh, very, very cool. You know, you've got Connect Four over here. And uh, yeah, yeah, and a couple of uh, board games. You've got code names in here. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this is, uh, it's really nice in here. Oh, and some, you do have some vintage, you know, historical photos on the walls here. So that is, uh, yeah, Wonderland history nerds uh, should, should be very pleased with this. And yes, you are able to get to the restrooms through here. So that is uh, also very, very good. Quick shout out to the always incredible sign shop for this, the Griffin's Crown VIP Lounge sign hanging down from the uh, from the eve here. That looks wonderful. I love that, and it's just it's it's you know a little a little extra touch for this premium experience. Very grateful to the associate inside the Griffin's Crown VIP Lounge for letting me film in there, and I am very happy to see some flowers in the well around the Griffin's Crown sign out here. Uh, out front of Allswell Hall. I got the beef brisket pizza from the Pizza Pizzeria, and uh, yeah, I decided that I would eat on the Allswell Hall patio because uh, even though Allswell Hall is not open today, this patio is thanks to the Griffin's Lounge, the, the Griffin's Crown VIP Lounge. That is excellent. Watching Vikings Rage from here. Uh, that is wonderful. I absolutely love this patio. Love the atmosphere, getting to see, uh, you know, the, the geese and goslings, uh, the little goslings that are all fuzzy uh, back here. Oh man, it is wonderful. I just, I love, love, love this whole, uh, yeah, yeah, the whole vibe back here is so tranquil. Uh, it's not quiet, but it is tranquil and that is just yeah, uh, it's it's perfect. So I'm going to continue eating my pizza uh, in the tranquil garden here. Vikings Rage is open today, so I already hopped on it, made sure to uh, actually get that experience with this new electric system, uh, and it's definitely a little different. Uh, <laughs> it's still, you know, it still provides the same thrills, uh, possibly a little bit better, a little bit more height possibly, I, I, I can't quite tell. But uh, yeah, very, still very different in terms of, you know, the the motor. It, it only has one wheel that, it, that has to switch between forward and reverse. Uh, very different from the old system of having uh, two tires, two motors for two tires, uh, one running in forwards and one running in, ver in reverse, and then swapping which one was making contact with the boat. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting system, and uh, I do like it. I think that it works uh, really well, uh, and, and it gets you, gets you going a little bit quicker. For some reason, it feels like it's, it takes a little bit longer to slow down, but, uh, but that's neither here nor there. The fact is, the ride is open. It is a fantastic ride, uh, and uh, yeah, just really, really great to see the park investing in older attractions. Uh, and yeah, elsewhere in Arthur's Bay, no progress on the new dive structure, but if uh, <laughs> if you followed me on if you follow me on Instagram, then you may have seen that uh, the pieces for this appear to be all ready to go. Uh, yeah, it looks like it will be a tiered sort of structure, uh, and uh, it, it, it's going to look very different. I'll have a better look at it uh, hopefully by next week because it, it seems like it is all ready to be installed. Just very, very quick install 
uh, I'm hoping. Uh, <laughs> so look forward to that. Make sure that you're subscribed so that you do see that update when it happens. Hi, Pigpen. How are you doing today? Stay, staying dirty, I imagine. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Great to see you. Bye. A couple updates here next to Yukon Strikers final inversion. Uh, the first thing is that the new bar for this year, uh, it now has a name. And uh, once I stop being distracted by Yukon Striker, which is beautiful and love, love, love this, uh, uh, the visuals here. Uh, yeah, the new bar has a name, Rapid Creek Bar. Uh, I think that name is really great for this section of the park. It works really, really well, uh, even though I still think it's a bit strange to put a bar here, but it seems to be popular. So what do I know? Uh, back in, uh, along this pathway, yeah, you, you've got, uh, you know, you've got Muskoka Plunge there. Uh, nothing, nothing new, but, but what's that behind it? <sighs> That is Moosehorn Falls. I did not expect to see it from all the way over here, but that is actually really, really cool that it is part of this visual walking along this pathway. Between last week and this week, the park has set up this uh, quite a substantial shade structure over the Waveside Tiki Bar. I believe that's still the name of it. Uh, yeah, it looks very, very nice. Uh, yeah, I definitely didn't expect that to, uh, to appear uh, between opening weekend and now. Over here in Splashworks, getting a look at, uh, well, Mindbuster is stealing my attention again. But no, uh, I mean, how much could have changed with uh, Moosehorn Falls in one week, right? I mean, oh my goodness. They have most of the slides done. <laughs> yeah, no, that looks, uh, wow, wow. It, it is taller than I, <laughs> than I was expecting. At least it feels taller uh, than I expected it to feel. Um, yeah, no, that is, wow, wow, that is really imposing. And uh, yeah, no, they have uh, obviously been working very, very hard on this, trying to get it ready for us as soon as they possibly can. Moosehorn Falls coming uh, uh, June 2024. It's, uh, that's what they're going for. And hopefully they will meet that deadline. It looks, uh, yeah, it looks massive. Uh, I don't know how well it's gonna come across in the video. Uh, but yeah, let's let's take a closer look. Here we've got the, uh, the stairwell there. Uh, most of that has been done now. So again, I'm assuming that that is going to be for the queue and then the bridge. Uh, no visible progress that I can see there. Uh, and still definitely, uh, mind the gap between the bridge and <laughs> the rest of the staircase going up to the platform. But uh, wow, wow, they put up the support columns and all of these slide pieces, uh, not all of the slide pieces, there are still some uh, left to go, more on that in a bit, but the drop is definitely done. That, that <laughs> That's gonna be quite a drop. Oh my goodness, yeah, you are, uh, you're, you're definitely going to feel that drop. So that is <laughs> really, really cool. I am so looking forward to Moosehorn Falls and it, it is, wow, wow, very, very intimidating. <laughs> Just getting a slightly wider look at Moosehorn Falls. I mean, this thing, it really, the, the slide portion, the upper slide portion, it's so much taller than I had anticipated. I mean, I knew that it was going to be obviously taller than the height of the wall because that's how physics works. But, but man, that is, that is wild. It is, I'm pretty sure it's taller than Super Soaker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm just so looking forward to it. Getting a wide, wide, wide look at Moosehorn Falls from back here between Black Hole and Mountain Bay Cliffs. Uh, yeah, yeah, lots of progress from last week. This is incredible. Uh, the slide is very imposing now. It is, uh, it looks like it's nearly complete. I mean, they still have to connect from the platform over to that section right there. And uh, yeah, there are still a couple gaps here that I, I imagine will be filled. I don't think they expect the uh, rafts to hop over there. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, mind, mind the gap. But <laughs> no, that is really, really cool 
uh, to see how quickly the park was able to uh, move forward with this. So much of construction is, is the stuff that we don't see. Uh, and now it's the exciting time where we get to see stuff happening. Uh, still no signs of the uh, raft return conveyor, uh, but I imagine that that will be coming uh, once they have finished uh, installing the rest of the slide pieces. Uh, so very, very cool. We're a long ways off still, uh, I think, but uh, lots of progress in just one week. I'm excited to see how this looks by next week. Taking a look at Mindbusters turnaround for a very Splashworks reason, and that is if you peek right back here, you can see one of the pieces for Moosehorn Falls. Uh, it looks giant, and I'm glad that it is, uh, you know, getting close to the uh, <laughs> to the site here. And oh look, two more giant pieces of Moosehorn Falls. That is excellent. I'm uh, man. We're, we're getting there. There is so much progress happening and it is wonderful to see. I am just I'm so looking forward to this slide and I think it is going to be such a great addition to Splashworks uh, once it opens. Around Swing of the Century, a good friend of mine, John Brooks, he pointed out that uh, there were lilac bushes all around Swing of the Century. So that is very, very cool. They don't seem to be in bloom at the moment, but they did look very, very nice. Uh, I have kind of been avoiding this area because it makes me sad with all the trees removed, but the lilac bushes, especially once they grow up a bit, uh, they are going to be really, really beautiful there. So that is uh, cool to see that. Also, right across the way, uh, progress on this, it, it does appear to be a soccer game replacing the old basketball one. So now a net is in place and that is good to see. I'm not sure exactly when this uh, game will open, but uh, yeah, there's your little bit of an update on that. Back here at Grand World Eatery again, and I decided to get the Mongolian beef once again because it is very, very tasty. Uh, I also got the rice this time instead of the pierogi, and it's, uh, it's, it's quite dried out, so that's kind of disappointing, but uh, still, Mongolian beef, still quite good. The north side of Grand World Eatery is still closed, but I can see some chairs at the back and some uh, some tables being assembled, so that is good to see that. Also, a bunch of string lights, which got me kind of curious. So I took another look at the closed patio here on the north side, and yeah, the park has started to put up a bunch, a bunch of string lights here in these pergolas. Very, very cool to see that. Uh, I don't know if that's just going to be for uh, food and wine festival. They wanted to make this area kind of one of the wine tasting spots uh, and make it just a little bit fancier there. But uh, regardless, I, I hope to experience this patio and I hope that all guests will get to experience this patio once it opens. Uh, Cause it looks, uh, I think that the string lights are really gonna make it just pop. As I suspected from around Tiny Tom Donuts, it looks like, yeah, the reason for these temporary fences, uh, this line, is that they are installing a new, uh, a new permanent fence around the back of Tiny Tom Donuts, probably to conceal some of the, you know, the garbage bins and that sort of thing uh, that will be behind this, uh, this new location. So, yeah, it's, it's probably this fence is not part of whatever the big project is, but uh, yeah, I mean, while the fences are here, maybe the park is going to do something else. We'll have to wait and see. Out here behind Apre Poutinery, right under uh, Thunder Run's exit. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, the fences around here haven't moved, but there is a new fence <laughs> at the back of Apre Poutinery. So that is uh, really, really cool to see that. And uh, that should give you an idea of what to expect over at Tiny Tom Donuts. I really intended to get a ride on Windseeker before it got dark out today. Sadly, that did not happen thanks to a uh, lengthy delay at the ride, and that's as much as I'll say about that. Uh, but it did mean that I got to ride Windseeker with all of its rainbow lights flashing, which, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of appropriate considering it is the first of June here. So that is uh, <laughs> really, really fun that I got to have that experience tonight. Uh, but. But before I got on Windseeker, I actually got on Vortex right over there. And 
Oh my goodness, there is activity happening on the roof of Wonder Mountain. I, I mean, there's been survey markings up there since the beginning of the season, but, uh, but now it seems like maybe some extra activity. I saw some spray paint, which appeared to be in a circular shape uh, in one particular corner here. Uh, yeah, yeah, very, very interesting stuff. I don't want to read into it too much. Uh, I, I, I have thoughts on it. My thoughts regarding uh, what the park is, uh, is planning uh, will come at a later date. But for now, I will just say, uh, next time you go on Vortex, you know, enjoy the view from the top of Wonder Mountain and maybe take a look around, uh, see what you can see. Uh, but you know, still, still keep your head forward and all that uh, important safety information. I nearly ran out of time, but I do have Trivia time with Toronto Tie. Yes, it is back for this season. Uh, and I am very, very excited to bring it back. My question for this week is, how many rides in Alpenfest were designed by a company based in Germany? Any company based in Germany. Let me know that in the comments below. And if you get it right, I will give you a shout out in my next video. And a huge shout out to SMG Super Mario Gaming and Aldo Parisi for both correctly stating how many, uh, <laughs> how much concrete and steel was used in the construction of Wonder Mountain. Unfortunately, my phone died, so I can't double check uh, what I have at the top of my head right here, but it is on screen right there. Yep. Yep, that's the amount. I'll put it in the description of this video as well for those who are visually impaired. But yes, that is a, <laughs> that is a lot of weight <laughs> here at the center of the park. We'll see how much uh, gets added to the structure uh, for, uh, for the next year. Uh, <laughs> but that, that's a topic for a different day. Regardless, thank you so much to everyone who participates in Trivia Time. Uh, I really love doing this segment. It lets me be super, super nerdy and uh, get some fun facts out there at the same time. But do let me know how many rides in Alpenfest were designed by a company based in Germany. Up here at True North Gifts, uh, things have changed and I mean they've changed since the park opened this year. Uh, yeah, they have done some renovations in here, uh, and honestly, I can't put my finger on all of them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure basically all the walls in here were redone, but I'm, I'm going to have to double check by going back through some of my footage. Uh, on this wall over here, it now has what looks to be the Toronto skyline uh, and a bunch of Toronto uh, sports merchandise uh, all across that wall. That is very, very cool. Uh, good to see that kind of update. And along this back wall, I'm pretty sure this was redone too. It is now wood. <laughs> uh, yeah, in a very nice pattern there. Uh, yeah, huge. <laughs> like this is this is wild that they did this since the park opened for this year. So many projects going on in the park. This one just completely slipped by me. I don't know when the park <laughs> had time to do this, but uh, but yeah, very very impressed at how many projects, how much investment the park is putting into so many different areas. Well, that'll about do it for this week here at Canada's Wonderland. It was another wonderful week, despite the uh, hiccup over at Windseeker. No, 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 I had a great time. I got on rides, which I have not done for my past two visits. So it was great to get back on some of those, including Vortex, checking out uh, some of the activity that seems to be happening on the roof of Wonder Mountain. Uh, yeah, very, very interesting stuff. Over in Medieval Fair, I got on Vikings Rage, which has its new electric system, so very cool to experience that for the very first time. Uh, and it is different, but still delivering those same thrills. Also, around Arthur's Bay, we have the Griffin's Crown VIP Lounge, and I got to take a tour in there. It looks very, very nice in there, and I think a lot of people are going to have a great time in that VIP Lounge. In Arthur's Bay itself, the dive structure has not started to show up there yet, but I did see it behind the scenes. And so that was <laughs> really, really cool. I think it's gonna go up uh, pretty quickly there in the center of Arthur's Bay. I mean, just look at what happened with uh, Moosehorn Falls. 
yeah, from last week to this week, that is a big change. <laughs> and I am just so, so impressed by how, how large that slide is and how quickly the park was able to install so many slide pieces. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to go, but I am confident that the park is going to get it open as quickly and safely as they possibly can. So that is very, very cool. And if you want to see <laughs> what a difference it is from this week to next week, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel because there are so many things happening around the park. So many things, I can't even keep track of them all. Uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna do my best. So if you're interested, make sure that you're subscribed because Phil, the uh, park's new general manager, well, maybe not so new. He's been here for a year and a half now. I think he's got some uh, fun things in store for us. I got to meet him today, uh, which was very, very cool. I recognized him wandering around the park and introduced myself. He seemed genuinely pleased to meet me and seems like a genuinely great guy. I am very, very excited to see what he has in store for us here at the most wonderful place on the planet, Canada's Wonderland. So if you're excited to see all the changes that happen, make sure that you're subscribed. And until next time, as always, have a good one. If you like this video, you can now buy me a hot chocolate at buymeacoffee.com. I also love hearing your thoughts, so feel free to leave a comment. Thanks so much for your continued support, and be sure to subscribe for more wonderful videos.